Hail, hail, the Celts are here, and what the hell do we care now, guys? I don't even really know where to start. We've come out with the weekend with three points. We got a really quick goal in a game that, you know, there was never really much threat of us dropping the points in, but really Celtic never really went on. Obviously, full-time whistle comes. We get booze from the stands. We get some interesting comments after the game. And the January window, the deadline for that closing is fast approaching and... You know, the expectations from the club in terms of what they've openly said themselves, the manager, members of the board, etc., you know, it's just nowhere near what the club said was the mission, what the fans had as the expectation. With us obviously really pushing to try and make sure we win the league again this year to secure the Champions League qualification for next season. The fan base is sort of divided at the moment. There's a lot of different opinions going around in terms of, you know, like we've won the game. You know, we're still keeping on with the league. We've beat Rangers twice. We had a great result recently enough against Aberdeen. And this squad, for the most part, has been kind of patchwork throughout the season. The squad has to have rolled with the punches, you know, and kind of like how many centre-back combinations have we had this season? How many midfield combinations have we had? And how many frontline have we seen this season you know it's been interchanging all season long it's been absolutely impossible for the team to really build much rhythm or whatever but we'll just get stuck straight into it if you actually go ahead and look at the way the game was set up we're playing Ross County at home we know we're going to dominate possession Celtic in the end ended up with 74 77 percent possession depending on what statistics uh, you, you keep up with and Ross County are setting up in a very predictable way 4-2-3-1 and the, the two and the three become a bit of a five, obviously, when they don't have the ball and they're dropping back and defending. And, you know, they're always going to be sending three players out, a midfielder, the fullback, the winger, out into the wide areas. They're just going to keep the centre ground nice and narrow. They're not going to give us any space to play into. It's the exact same as every other opponent that we play at home. And this has been the frustration all season long, really regardless of personnel, who's been fit, who's been in the starting eleven who's been in form, etc., is there's been no guile, there's been no cutting edge to the team to actually open an opponent out. We are relentlessly going out to areas where the wingers can't excel. They can't get the best out of themselves. In the, your opinion, on also Abad is just coming back from an injury, so he's kind of maybe working up to speed a little bit if you want to give him that bit of latitude. But Palma, you know, credit to him. In this game, i seen him dribble past two guys. He actually beat two guys on the dribble and, you know, made some space for himself and made a couple of, you know, it's probably, I think, his best performance for Celtic, to be honest with you, which I don't think I've heard anyone else say, but i seen him dribble past two people, which he's not done before. <laughs> But this tactic of just putting like Bernardo up here as another forward, putting him into the crowd, right onto the front line, similar to O'Reilly, if they're not really deep here with McGregor, these guys are going onto the front line and they're getting put into this crowd and no one, no one is trying to find them with passes. We are relentlessly doing the same thing over and over again. Now, Bernabe is probably a little bit of the elephant in the room here in terms of just, like you know, he wasn't expected to play. Obviously, we had Greg Taylor injured, but in a lot of the, you know, oh, this might happen or that might happen, I don't think anyone figured that it would be Bernabe. And the wee man put in, like, a decent shift in this inverted fullback position. Like, it was the Bernabe uh, and McGregor show. And Bernabe was creeping into some of these little spaces, these little pockets, like Taylor does, that can open up the team and can be the difference. I think McGregor maybe got into the box once. He won the penalty for us, obviously. Um, and I thought Bernabe did a little bit okay. Now, in the pre-match for this, when I seen Bernabe on the team, I thought, fantastic. We might actually see what Palmer's meant to do as a left winger. If we've got this bombastic fullback who just wants to hug the line, go on and beyond, and then, you know, try and do stuff in the final third. This could work out really well for Palma, buy him a bit of space, give him a bit of support. So then that coming inside option maybe becomes easier for him. Maybe he gets some more success from it. And maybe that's where we get a lot of joy. And we did try and put the ball down both wings. You know, like, we, you know, basically Scales, Vickers were up here. AJ was kind of in this position and Abada was hanging out wide, coming inside. And again, you know, kind of interchanged throughout the match, as you know, if you watched it. But for the most part, this is kind of the way things went. And obviously we had Scales. Scales played some lovely balls in this game. He took up ground really well. Scales quite often found himself actually here. Uh, when Bernabe was finding himself in these little pockets and Scales was getting like geographically like very high into the pitch, meaning he was playing a lot of the final balls because no one else was doing it. 
He was just taking yards. Ross County were standing off him. And he's the one playing some of these balls into the box where you would expect it to be your kind of creative midfielder. The guy that can then follow that ball on and then actually penetrate the box, take a runner, take a marker with him, cause a little bit of chaos, maybe create some space for another man coming in, maybe somewhere else for these saves. Maybe they get passed on, hit the post, ricochet off, or even just for you know an easy ball to be squared or whatever. But when you've got your centre-back doing that for you know large parts of the second half, certainly, it's um it's not quite the same thing. In midfield, having Bernardo and O'Reilly are just both so similar. You don't really get that person that's going to come into the half spaces and play a quick one-two. Now, both of them are actually both very good at that, but they don't seem to be instructed to do that. It seems to be we've got Bernabe on the inside here with McGregor. We go out to Palma. They put two or three guys around that space there. He can't do anything with it. We give it back in here. We pass the ball around forever. We go out this side with Abada. Same thing happens, but Alistair Johnson was really good at doing these underlapping runs. And, you know, sometimes on the right-hand side, it looks like something might have happened, but it never really did amount to anything. And there's just never any attempt to come centrally through the ball. Now, at elite level football, the middle of the pitch is the most important part of it, right? And this tactic of, you know, the inverted fullback and, you know, just us dominating possession with a square here, in theory, does give you the centre ground and it does give you control of the pitch to a degree. But if you're not actually able to cut through the middle of a team into the goal face itself like so if you can't get chances into this area here if you can't make the most of your attacking players in this zone from open play of course playing passes into a really crowded area you know also striker will be a bit deeper in this scenario there's no attempt to really get anything happening in here sometimes Kyogo will drop deep and try and play a quick one too but he's got like three or four guys around him and they're all just bodying him you know and like fair play to the wee man but not much is coming back off him i think he had one shot on target in this game and we're just admitting that hey we've not got anything that can get through the middle here so we're just going to go out wide it's not on, ball's broken down. And in Ross County, every time they looked good, think about how they attacked us. It was mainly the boy Danda, but he was traveling through the middle of the pitch. Because when you travel through the middle of the pitch, you put everyone on red alert, you know, because the middle of the pitch, straight to go, you're then having to put, um, you know, defenders on the back foot, changing body position, getting ready to either intercept the player with the ball, retreat more, is there other players covering to support, you need to be watching and scanning all that kind of stuff. So attacking through the middle of the pitch is the most dangerous way to go. And when you've got 77 to 80% of the of possession, and this zone here that I've got inside this little funnel, the amount of touches we had in this area of the pitch was criminal. Now, statistically, you can see exactly all the players that we're talking about. Um, Alistair Johnson getting the goal obviously helps his performance overall. But these are the guys that have had successful actions in the game. Passes, duels, interceptions, tackles, all that kind of stuff. And that's why their scores are really high. And these are the guys that are on the ball for the 77% of possession we've got. We've not got the attacking players in the team dropping into those little pockets of space and really knitting some attacking play together, cutting a team open as best as possible. It is hard, but it can be done. We've done it before last season and we're not doing it at the moment. And getting those tap-ins for Kyogo, getting those, you know, rebounds for Bernardo, all the other stuff that goes on. Now, the Ross County game was poor. I think the St Mirren game was A-OK. -okay. Obviously, winning the derby, we were all quite happy with the way that game went, the result, and all the rest of it. But Dundee away, don't forget, we won 3 now, right? But we needed Mikey Johnson off the bench to score two goals. He was a, that was a very similar game to what we had here with Ross County. Livingston again, Liam Scales gets a goal. I'm pretty sure that was from a corner. Palma with two assists in this one. I think this was a relatively similar match as well. We obviously lost to Hearts. And this is all off the back of, you know, the Champions League campaign and how that went. And if you do watch that analysis video on the expectations that the board and the manager have said we have for the January window and the development of the club, you know, it's really from that Hearts game onwards is when we hear the majority of these noises coming out from the club when they had their AGM and when Brendan's getting asked about this stuff more and more in press conferences. And these are the results and these are the performances that are coming in in this period here. Now I said the Derby was good, beating St Mirren was good. But there is a problem here in the team that we're not able to cut teams open. And this is a problem that, you know, for how tight the league is at the moment, like, we won 1-0, we missed a penalty. Ross County could have scored in this game and it is really the result that's unfortunately dictating 
how some people want to accept the match as for what it was. But I think for anyone that's seen the game can see that Celtic are just way, way off it at the moment. And But we've had this systemic problem of not having a player that can work in these little spaces where it is difficult to get on the ball. It is super crowded. It feels like we're a man down or somehow they're a man up quite often. And, you know, the only time we're really creating those opportunities is when Burnaby's in these little spaces or when Alistair Johnson's making these underlapping runs from Abada. And yeah, your fullbacks are a really important part of, of modern football and tactics and all the rest of it. But that is like our only way of getting into the box potentially or creating some space. And we're not getting anything out of Bernardo from it in this match here. And I think, you know, it seemed like he could play in this system very well in the St Mirren match. And I think actually the Dundee game, uh, although I don't think Celtic were good, I think Bernardo was pretty good in that match as well, if memory serves me right. I know he scored, but I think beyond that, it was a good game for him. And uh, it just didn't seem to be there. So between him and O'Reilly, I don't know if it was both maybe a bit of an off day for them or whatever, but neither one of them really did anything in these little pockets where they're normally really effective. Bernardo, of course, did actually miss a really big chance in, uh, in the first half, yeah. But in terms of midfielder, it was all McGregor and it was all like Burnaby coming into this little space here and it was just playing the ball between this back square, try and go out wide, get crowded, and then same on this side here. Ross County are second bottom. They just lost... 3-0 to Partick Thistle, 3-0 to Aberdeen, drew 2-2 with Hearts and lost 1-0 to Dundee. That's their last five games. They've conceded 10 goals in five games, one from us, which is incredible. And this is a game that should be really setting up this final, like uh, the second half of the season from the winter break where we're going to kick on. We're going to run away with the league. We're going to express our dominance on the table and you know we're going to secure Champions League qualification and go on from this incredible position of strength. Now, who knows what's going to happen in the January window in the left-back position, but I think as soon as Hitate comes back in here, a guy that's very mobile, wants to get into these little spaces, loves to run into blind spots of players, is great at changing the pace. Sometimes he does like dwindle on the ball and he is a bit frustrating, but very quickly he'll just go from first gear to, to top gear and he'll just be give and go, run into a blind spot, play someone else in like Kyogo or O'Reilly or whoever it might be, Abada, and just makes things happen. And I do think with the absence we've had of Atate this season from injury and now from international duty, it's very easy to forget how much of an impact he does have in these areas here and making things happen. When, you know, Ross County did try and attack, there was a few players that would come out. They, they weren't like ultra defensive, no, no matter what. They did try and come out at times. There was spaces for us to turn the ball over quickly and come in and attack this kind of central funnel here. But every time it was just, it was not on it. It was the same thing, get it out wide. And then he'll be faced up versus two. And then it's like, I can't do anything. Who's helping me? Nobody. Okay, here's Burnaby. Obviously, Tati didn't play. Forget that for a second. With all the transfer links we've got to Matt O'Reilly, this is kind of the element of midfield that we really need to think about. We've been previously talking a lot about the number six position. I do think McGregor could play in that kind of half space role better. And there's a big argument for bringing someone like Anawata into the squad. I know he's not fit at the moment. And maybe that's why Bernardo is playing in this space at the moment rather than a McGregor. But I don't think we've got that balance in there. And I do think Brendan Rodgers and the team at the moment are just putting a lot of pressure on the individuals to do their job when the, as soon as you know, the first whistle goes. I don't see much in terms of what is the what is the plan? What is the actual tactic here? You know, if I'm imagining I'm a coach at Celtic, I'm a manager at Celtic, and it's like, right, okay, we've just beat Bucky Thistle, we're preparing for Ross County. I don't see what they've worked on all week. I don't really get it. But next game we've got, we're going to be away to Aberdeen and we might get a little bit more synergy. I suspect Burnaby's probably going to play again. I suspect the starting 11 is probably going to be a dead ringer for this game as well. And it's hopefully maybe just getting the reps in for some of these guys because again, like I mentioned at the tip off of the video, the squad has had to roll with the punches this year. There's never really been an optimal Celtic team that's been eligible to be fielded, you know, with suspension, with injury, with, you know, transfers in and out so far and, a few other bits and bobs in between. I suppose the other thing to mention from this game is we did see the introduction of Kuhn. But I think, it, yeah, at first he came on for... He came on for Palma on the left-hand side rather than Abada. And he looked okay. He had some okay touches. He came on side a few times. Like... And then later on, who was it came on? Johnson, of course, for Abada. And Johnson, when he came on, by the way, I thought, this is a game... Like, he bailed us out against Dundee and everyone seemed happy enough with that. So... I think people should be happy he's coming on now because maybe he can bail us out in this game because he'll take a man on and get into space and then make something happen, you know, and he's maybe playing for a move or playing for a role in the team still. 
And then when Kuhn came on to this side, I don't think we really seen much of him, to be quite honest with you. It was just a relentless, you know, left to right, left to right stuff again for the majority of the game. And, you know, outside the... I didn't even mention the penalty, of course. It just boiled my blood. I think everyone else has spoke about it to death. You probably don't need me to tell you about how bad the penalty was. And really, I think Kyogo should get the next penalty, but we probably won't get a penalty, just knowing Celtic until Hitate comes back, and Hitate is going to be on penalties. But I think Kyogo could use the, the easy boost to confidence. I think everyone else is on the same page with this one, you know, but the wee man is just starving. He is starving of chances. Nothing's coming through the middle to him. And when we are getting out wide, like... People are shooting more than they're trying to find Kyogo. That's what I don't get about what are they actually practicing because I just don't see people trying to feed Kyogo that often. I think Scales tries it. I think Scales sees him and tries to do it a bit. McGregor's not bad at it once in a while as well. But like honestly, the majority of players that we put on the ball are not capable or willing or whatever to try and play Kyogo either into space and on the run. He makes so many good runs that are never ever found, especially when you go to the matches, you see that in person. Don't know about the Ross County game, wasn't there in person. And then even when the opposition is, like, super camped in, like, he is up for it. He moves around. He tries to, you know, buy himself some space and he'll take a wee, a wee sharp run, you know, if you watch him. And if they're training together, you would think they would, you know, give each other the signal or, you know, they would know, oh, okay, when you get into this space here, I'll, I'll try and creep in behind this run here and you play the ball into this channel for me or whatever, you know. Now, I think the majority of the booze that come at full time of the game here is probably in relation to the transfer activity and seeing what the quality is on the pitch. This is actually a really good game for Celtic where we had a really strong first 11. Questionable on the left back, of course, as we've mentioned, Bernabe, no one thought he would be playing this match and he's came in from out in the cold to, 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 make, to play a prominent role. But we're able to bring Kuhn off the bench as well, which is the first time really we've had more than three forwards available that we can call upon, which has been a nice thing to exercise. And you would think with the amount of possession we had and really the amount of chances we should have been creating, having that extra bit of firepower in the squad really should have amounted to something, which it didn't. And um, probably the final kind of footnote that I did notice from this as well is we had some really good news in the midweek, of course, that Carter Vickers has signed a new bumper contract for basically the rest of his the main part of his career, essentially. You know, he signed that over to Celtic now, which is fantastic news. We're all huge fans of Carter Vickers, of course, here on the channel, and I think that's great. There's a lot to be said for the value of team cohesion, like we're kind of talking about in the video. The same people playing in the same squad for extended periods of time just naturally can play better together in a variety of situations. And normally you're looking at the centre-backs, midfielders, and maybe the goalkeeper as well. Obviously, the goalkeeper position, we are hoping changes in the summer. But seeing him taken off in the 64th minute and we know the injury record we've seen from him this season, never mind anything else previous to that, it does feel like he's damaged goods in the sense that like we all know, Carter Vickers included, this is the best it gets for him. He's staying at Celtic, he's going to be a Champions League player, he's going to win medals, he's going to play in you know, one of the biggest derbies in the, in the world. And he's just like, this is me. He's not going to go to the Premier League and be a rotation player or he's not going to go and try and do anything else like that and just... Well, mistakes that you know many other Celtic I don't know how everyone else feels you know but there's been other Celtic players that have been great for us and as soon as they leave us their career just goes nowhere for whatever reason and uh, I love the fact that the big man's here I love that he's bought in and he's here and he's committed he's not going to have his head turned all this transfer speculation we can probably all forget about that he's here he's locked in and uh, that's great to see before the game we did have Rogers mentioning that Naroki was brought in to compete with Starfell and Carter Vickers and Carter Vickers also gets substituted off in the Ross County game, 64th minute for Naroki, who I think did very, very good. Scales, of course, is probably immovable in this squad for me at this point. And in the Aberdeen match we've got coming up, it'll be really interesting to see how many minutes Carter Vickers plays. Does he play 90 minutes in that game, which is a much more important one? Ross County, second bottom, you're winning 1-0. Is that easy minute management, getting Naroki some minutes, as well as take the load off of Vickers? That'll be a wee interesting kind of footnote at the end of the video for, for me to you, certainly. Uh, as well as, will Bernabe keep his place? And do we get Kyogo on penalties? Do we maybe get Kuhn from the start as well? Abada was a wee bit flat. Maybe it goes with Kuhn and Abada against Aberdeen. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting game because the manager will need to approach it in a much more different way. Because Aberdeen will try and come and attack, being at home and their position this season it was really far from secure. 20 games played, 23 points. Like, every point is a prisoner for them at the moment. They're going to be hyper-motivated. Obviously, we beat them 6-0 very recently. And we might actually have a better game on the table for our players to have a better match because we will have space to counter-attack. We will have space to run into with the pace that we have in the front line. It might be a game that's better suited 
to the eleven that played against Ross County, for example. But it's just frustrating when you see the lack of, like I said at the tip off of the video, guile and invention from the team when you know you're going to dominate most teams in this fashion with these players. And especially Kyogo should be the number one striker. Everything should be built around feeding him. And it's just, it couldn't look any further from that. You know, it feels like we're trying to avoid him at times, you know, with people shooting on sight and just not trying to play that pass to him. And he makes the run into, you know, everything that we've spoke about in the video, essentially. So I'm expecting actually a much better game from the attacking players against Aberdeen. And I think it's going to put a lot more pressure on the defence. Joe Hart. Carter Vickers for minutes, like we mentioned, does Burnaby play? And I think Scales will probably have a big game, uh, being at his, his former club, as it were. But uh, but yeah, let us know in the comment section of this video, what do we need before the transfer window closes? We're hotly after the left back, of course. I think we can all see the need for it. But with Burnaby still being in, an inverted fullback, we never got him bombing on for Palma and really being that attacking left fullback that we all think Burnaby is and we all think that Rodgers wants. And I would have thought would have made Palmer's job a lot easier and might have made him look a bit better. Burnaby still was doing this inverted thing. So is this a, is this something that we're sticking with, with Brendan Rodgers? I always thought he was just doing that with Taylor because that's the best thing for Greg Taylor. But I don't think that's the best thing for, like, he played good enough Burnaby, you know, I think for the most part. Defensively, you know, he was pretty poor. But in this little inverted role in attacking spaces, like, you know, he did the job well enough, but he's, yeah, he's definitely not there for us. But nice wee shot window game for him, as it were. We definitely need a left back, but, you know, we've heard it from the club, we've heard it from the manager, we need four quality players. Brendan's already said that Kuhn is a quality player, which is maybe one down the list. And, you know, uh, expectations have been tempered ever since then, of course. Um, and, you know, maybe it's going to be a left back, maybe something else is what we're kind of looking for in the attacking positions. But Kuhn was an unexpected addition in the wing areas. So, you know, I never leave the, I never close the door on something totally unexpected happening uh, right towards the end of the transfer window. We're really interested in catching those comments um, <laughs> down in the comment section from you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're pushing for 10,000 subscribers and we cannot do that without your support, guys. So if you've enjoyed this type of content and you want to see more of it, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, get into the comment section and hail, hail.